In the name of Allah, most gracious, ever merciful. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you, dear viewers. Welcome to tonight's live online lecture organized by the UK Talim Department. As per our tradition, we will start with the recitation of the Holy Quran. If I could please request Master Nasir Ahmed of Wusu Konadu to recite a portion. A'uzu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ya ayyuhallazina amanu ati'ullaha wa ati'ur rasul Wa ulil amri minkum Fa in tanazak Tum fi shay'in farudduhu ila Allah War rasuli in kuntum tu'minuna billah Wal yawmil akhir Zalika hayru wa ahsanu ta'wila Alam tara ila allazina yazumuna annahum amanu Bi annahum amanu Bima unzila ilayk Wa ma unzila min qablik Wa ma unzila min qablika yuriduna ay Yatahakamu ila tabut Wa qad umiru ayyan furu bih Wa yuridu shaytanu ayyudillakum dalalam ba'idha وَإِذَا كِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعْلَى مَا أَنْجَلَ اللَّهِ وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ رَأَيْتَ الْمُنَافِكِينَ يَصُدُّونَ أَنْكَ سُدُودًا the verses which I have just recited from you to you are from chapter 4, Surah An nisa verses 60 to 62. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan, the accursed. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. O ye who believe, obey Allah and obey his messenger and those who are in authority among you. And if you differ in, um, in anything among yourselves, refer it to Allah and his messenger, if you are believers in Allah in the last day. That is best and most commendable in the end. Those there know, not know of those who pretend that they believe in what has been revealed to thee and what has been revealed before thee. They desire to seek judgment from the rebellious although they were commanded not to obey them, and Satan desires to lead them far away. And when it is said to them, Come ye to what Allah has sent them and to his messenger, 
Thou sees the hypocrites turn away from thee with aversion. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah, Nasser. Um, very well recited, mashallah. Um, tonight we have the pleasure of being joined by Ahmed Awusu Konodu Sahib, who serves as the Deputy President of the Pan African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association UK. He is also the MTA Africa Country Manager for Ghana and Nigeria, Regional Chairman of Charity Walk for Peace Scotland, and also serves as spokesperson for the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Scotland. This evening, Ahmed Saheb will speak on the topic, True Love for Khilafat. As always, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. These will be put to Ahmed Saheb on your behalf in the last 15 minutes. Please type your questions into the live chat and kindly ensure that they are relevant to tonight's topic. It gives me great pleasure to hand over to Ahmed Saheb to deliver tonight's lecture. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, dear viewers, um, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Amma ba'd fa'awzu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa rahmanir rahim malik yawmiddin. Iya kana budu wa iya kana sta'in. Iya kana budu wa iya kana sta'in. Ihdina siratal mustaqim. Siratal lazina an'amta alayhim. Bayril maghdubi alayhim wa lakulin. Amen. I would first of all thank the organizers for giving uh, or permitting my humble self to speak on this very important topic, true love for Khilafat, which is a topic which is uh, dear to every Ahmadi. But I tried my level best uh, to avoid <laughs> the Talim lecture. Uh, not because uh, um, I, <laughs> I, I failed, actually. The main reason why I just wanted to just uh, avoid it was the fact that uh, I've been listening. It's, it's the program has become one of my favorite programs. And actually, um, I tend to uh, love the speakers who are on. And they are people whom I actually listen to more or less. They have become my mentors. So me coming on sound like I was going to bring the standard below or probably cause you people to lose your viewers. And then that is why I actually wanted to um, avoid it. But here am I. I don't have any option. Uh, I hope I don't dilute uh, the program. Uh, and I hope I don't cause uh, viewers to, uh, so let me, to, to lose their interest in the program. Uh, I would humbly uh, beseech everyone here to pray for me so that Allah enable me to deliver uh, to acceptable to all. Now, talking about Khilafat, I think it's very, very important. It's, it's very, very important that uh, we all understand um, what Khilafat is. Um, <clears throat> Khilafat, put it in a very simple context, uh, it's a, it simply means a successor, one who is here to succeed someone. And in that context, we would say that the Khalifa is the one who actually succeeds Allah on the earth, or a Khalifa is one who actually succeeds a prophet when he passes away. So in that, in that uh, sphere, we would understand that a Khalifa would sort of be a representative of the prophet or a representative of Allah on the earth. Now, keeping this in mind, then we have to understand that to love the Khalifa or to have the true love for the Khalifa would simply mean having true love for the Almighty Allah and then also having true love for the uh, Prophet of the Almighty Allah as well. Uh, <clears throat> I would move on to say that 
the institution of Khilafat was very, very important in the institution of, uh, um, in, the, uh, in the Islam as, as, a, as a religion. And we noticed that uh, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before he passed away, um, gave that uh, prophecy that Khilafat institution would come. And, and that would be just like he been what uh, coming back and we should, the Muslims of the time should try their level best to give the due respect and obedience to the Khalifa, just like they would do to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The understanding simply means that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has come back or is represented by someone. And if somebody is represented by someone, then this due respect and diligence that needs to be done to that particular person needs to be met to the same as the person who comes to represent what the, the Khalifa or represent the Prophet. This in mind, we will see that when the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, we see that Khulafai Rashidin came to what to stay for a while. And we see that special love that the 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 companions, the Sahaba had for the what the the Khulafa Rashidin was something that sadly after about 30 years they lost it. And we see that the Hazrat uh, Abu Bakr who being the first Khalifa, he was the one who eventually was not attacked. But when you take as a, uh, Abu Bakr out of the equation, then you see that the second Khalifa, third Khalifa, and the fourth Khalifa, all of them were attacked. And that is something that we see that sadly had happened. And this caused the Muslim world to uh, bring a turmoil in the world, the Islamic world uh, religion. But Allah was so good to us that he made a prophecy that this would happen again, that he would what, bring back the, the, the institution of Khilafat. And that is what we saw, that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made that prophecy. And we see that happening again in the person, or starting again, the prophethood, the, the prophethood of uh, Azra Mizra Ghulam Ahmed Alayhi Salam, actually brought back what the institution of uh, Khilafat. And that is what Ahmadis are enjoying today that all the other sects can never what talk to what to claim to possess. No matter how much jealous they would be, they would only see the Ahmadiyya Muslim community as the only community with what the institution of Khilafat because that is something that Allah himself has prom prophesied, uh, Allah himself has made a prophecy in the Holy Quran. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also made a, made, a, made a prophecy that that is only going to happen to that uh, community that are indeed true, obedient to Allah and true what righteous people and do good works. Now we see this happening again in the time of the Holy Prophet, uh, the Promise of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Promise of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beautifully puts it in, in, in Brahini Ahmadiyya, Ruhani Kazain, volume one, page 598. When the Prophet alayhi salam says, once before going to sleep, he invoked a great amount of darud onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he went to sleep, <clears throat> as he went to sleep, he saw in the dream that angels were roaming the land looking for an individual that had true love of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their heart. In order to carry the banner, that would be the revival of Islam. But this person was yet to be what to be found. But when the angels came across the Promise alayhi salam, they proclaimed, they exclaimed, Haza Rajulun Yuhibul Rasulullah. This is the man who truly really loves what the Prophet of Allah, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, this again, let's talk, let's think of the topic that we have today the true love for Khilafat. Now, for Allah to bring about the institution of Khilafat again, he talks about someone who was truly a love, had a special love for the word, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this would simply mean that for us to be able to love Khilafat very well, we also have to have that special love for what? The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is, that is when we will say that we are, what, exhibiting the true love 
for Hilafat. The Prophet Messiah comments on that by saying that the greatest criteria for a person to fulfill was that they must have a complete love for the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We see that also beautifully what illustrated in the Holy Quran, chapter uh, 9, Al Tawbah, verse 24, when Allah says in the Holy Quran, Say, if your fathers, your sons, your brethren, your wives, your kinsfolk, and the wealth you acquired, and the trade whose darkness you fear, and the dwellings which you love are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger, and striving in His cause, then wait until Allah comes with his, with his judgment and Allah guides not the disobedient people. Now, we can see from this particular verse that Allah wants us to sacrifice everything for his sake and the sake of his Rasul. This also we see that in Hadith and Sahih Buhari um, number 15 and Muslim number 44, where Azad Anas ibn Malik reported that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, none of you can have true faith until I am more beloved to him than his children, his father, and all the people, all the people and mankind. We can see from this that there is a special love that we have to develop for the one appointed by Allah. And again, thinking of what we are trying to talk about today, that to be able to love the Khalifa, you need to have a special love for Allah and the Rasul. And loving the Khalifa would be equated to the same as having a special love for the what? For the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, and then having a special love for the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The promised Messiah, alayhi salam, beautifully puts it in Malfuzat, volume 8, page 82 to 83, where he said, I wish to see that my followers have become the like of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now this again tells us that for us to be able to have that special love for the, for, for the Khalifa, we will have to understand that whatever the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam is telling us and how he wants us to be is what exactly we are going to be. Now the wish of the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam is that my followers have become like the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In giving preference to Allah's will, nothing else should stand in their way. They should attach no importance to their riches and their lives. Their companions face heavy odds. Their companions face heavy odds to win Allah's pleasure. If any one of them was not tried for Allah's sake, he would feel sorry and worried. They had understood that the treasure of Allah's pleasure was hiding under the trials and tribulations. And the verse of the Holy Quran exactly defines the position to which they have reached. It says some of them have matired, some of them have been matired and have reached their goal, while there are others who still await the chance to lay down their lives and attain martyrdom. The Sahaba never stooped to worldly gains that they live long and amass and enjoy a life, a, a carefree life. In a nutshell, the Prophet Isaiah goes on to say, the only object to seek, the, our only object is to seek Allah's pleasure and to make every effort to get it, even though we are required to undergo hardships, for Allah's pleasure is far better than this world and much superior to all worldly pleasures. Now, this is how the promised Messiah alayhi salam, wanted to see the what the companions or wanted to see the Ahmadis behave. Now, thinking of this, we we'll then have to understand that our beloved Huzu, the Khalifa Tul Mercy, would also have the same wish at heart that if we truly love him, then he wants to see us to behave like the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And trying to bring back this particular glory of Islam, we can see that this special love that existed within the Holy, within the Holy Prophet Muhammad and his Sahaba, the companions, can only be seen in the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. You cannot find that in any other community except the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And this is where we see that the Khalifa have the special love for the, for the, for the followers, the Ahmadiyya Muslim members, and the members equally have 
that special love for what for the Khalifa. As a Muslim already allowed Talan who beautifully puts it in the in his book, The Blessings of Khilafat, page six, when he says, To have someone who have true sympathy for you, who truly really loves you, who considers your pain and suffering to be his own, and who is always praying to Allah for you. This is how what the Khalifa feels for us, and this is how what he prays for us. I remember, I think about two years ago, during the Khudam uh, al-Ahmadiyya uh, Ishtima, when Saif Zada Meza Wakas Ahmed, the beloved son of the Huzur, was asked about how Huzur prays. And, and he puts it in a very beautiful way. He says, do you actually visualize how Huzur actually prays during uh, Jasa Salana? And we all know, during Isha prayers and Fajr prayers, we can see the, the cries of our, we can feel the cries of our beloved who's through the mic that is actually weeping. And this weeping is only for us. He cries for us and he prays for us because he's what? He's empathetic. Huzu himself puts it very beautifully in his Friday sermon, June 6, 2014, when Huzu states, There is no country in the world that I do not go. I do not go to in my imagination before falling asleep. For whom I do not what pray while sleeping and while waking. Now we can just imagine the enormous work that Huzu actually have, what he does right from morning up to late night when he goes to bed. Yet he says before he sleeps, he imagines every, every country that we have Ahmed is there. And what he does is that he prays for us before sleeping, and then he wakes up still praying for us. And Uzu say, and, and Mizawakas, when he explains whether he goes, what you see in the Jasa Salana, when you come home in the Tahajud time, Uzu does it continues for about an hour or two hours when he's praying. So you can just imagine how the Khalifa Tulumasi prays for us. And Uzu goes on to say very beautifully, he says, I am not saying this is to count favors. No. This is my duty, and may Allah exalt, may Allah the exalted make me to perform my duty more than ever. Now the Huzur is saying it's not a favor that he's doing to anyone. He says this is a responsibility that Allah has given to him that he needs to honor and is doing his part. And he requires that we all pray for him, for him to achieve that goal. He goes on to say, there can be no comparison between the Khalifa to Messi of the time and any worldly leader. So carrying on to say that the Khalifa to Messi of the time has a personal connection with people of all backgrounds and all races. The content of the daily post of the Khalifa to Messi of the time is an unbelievable matter for any worldly people. People write personal letters to him discussing their personal affairs. It is the Khalifa that focuses on the pain of every Ahmadi of the world and the Khalifa of the time prays for them. Now he goes on to say, which worldly leader pray for the alien? Which worldly leader is anxious for the young woman to get married and prays for them? And which worldly leader is concerned about the education of his people? We see this special love that is now I'm trying to build that, as, that is existing between what? The Khalifatul Masih and then what? The, uh, the members of the Jamaat which is something that we saw at the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we read again in the monthly Ansarullah Rabwa in September 1977, page 14 and 15. And this is again how some of the companions, the Sahaba of the Promised Messiah Alayhi Wasallam exhibited the special love for the Promised Messiah Alayhi Wasallam. On one occasion, the Prophet Alayhi Salam was traveling with some friends to deliver a lecture in Sialkot. While passing through the street, someone threw a heap of ashes from a rooftop, which was intended for the Promised Messiah Alayhi Salam. By the grace of the Almighty Allah, the Promised Messiah was saved. But as a consequence, these ashes landed upon the head of Azrat Maulana Burhanuddin Sahib, whom in, in, in turn, became a spectacle for people standing by. Everyone started mocking at him and they started laughing at him. But let's look at how he responded. 
However, he did he did what he did next left everyone laughing completely dumbfounded. He stood there in ecstasy and most cheerfully exclaimed, Come on, woman, throw some more. And this solely was due to the love he had for the promised Messiah. Salam. But this is not even the end of the story. Similarly, after the promised Messiah had departed from Seacot, those who accompanied him to the station went to see him up and thereafter returned to their homes. Somehow, again, he, wasn't, he, he was fortunate here, I'll put it that way, Maulana Burhanuddin Sahib was left behind and the opponents caught hold of him once again. This time round, they went as far as to humiliate him so severely that they even stabbed what cow dog, that excuse me to say, the shit of cow in his mouth. But to this day, he would repeatedly say, now this is how he beautifully puts it, oh Burhan, how did you, how did you deserve these blessings? That is to say, really, is one victimized for the sake of religion. When that occasion arises, it should be, it's to be inferred as the good fortune to suffer in that manner. And we see that when our beloved Huzu was also what imprisoned for the sake of Allah, we saw the videos that came out. He actually saw it as a favor that Allah has done to him, that he had made him suffer in this cause. And we see the video very beautifully that he had the chance to leave Rabwa. He had the chance to even leave Pakistan. But he decided to stay and went through that ordeal only for the pleasure of the Almighty Lord, Allah. We see again the love that is existing between what the Khalifa Tul Mersi and then the what the Ahmadis, as we said in what in the Friday's sermon delivered by our beloved Huzu not long ago in May 29th this year, where Huzu states in 1974 when Ahmadis were being targeted and persecuted, one Ahmadi sold his land to buy another closer to Rabwa. Obviously. That is where the home of the Khalifa is. So he wanted to get closer to that. However, when he informed Khalifa Tul Messi the third, Salis Rahmahullah, he expressed his disappointment and told him he should not, he should have kept that land. So this Ahmadi did all he could to buy back and did so at a much higher cost, at a much higher price. And then after buying that land at a much higher price, he then informed the Khalifa Tul Messi that he has what uh, acted upon his instructions. And this is the love that the members of the Jamaat also would have for the Khalifa Tul Messi and try to obey him in everything that we can. We see that again in Hazrat Khalifa Tul Messi, the second, in the same Kutuba, when Huzu said, Hazrat Khalifa Tul Messi, the second, as a Muslim already allowed to learn, who instructed his community to increase preaching efforts to others. One youngster went to Afghanistan without even a passport to do this tax of preaching. He was taken to jail, but he continued to preach there too. Now you can just imagine someone being, what, being arrested for not having a passport because he went there to do preaching. And when he was taken to jail, he continued to do the tablik there as well. He never stopped. So they decided to send him back to India. Now, upon returning to India, this young man did not even go to see his earthly mother and presented himself before Hazrat Khalifa Tul Messi the second again and expressed his willingness and desire immediately to travel to another country where Hazrat Khalifa Tul Messi would direct him. And that is what an excellent obedience that we expect every Ahmadi to exhibit for the word, the Khalifa Tul Messi. We now move on to. I just want to give you some of the glimpses again. And one, one source that I felt was very, very much needed because I remember in one of our uh, Amla Mulakat with our beloved Huzu, I personally asked Huzu, how can we as, as, uh, what, uh, instill the love of the Khalifa to Messi in our children? And Huzu himself said, MTA is one, and the other was what? Trying to let the children read the diary of Abed Khan. So I decided to pick some of the uh, excerpts from the Abid Khan diary, and this is taken from Jalsa, United Kingdom, 2016, part four. And he writes, a French speaking journalist from Benin once said to Huzu, whilst I have been here at Jalsa, UK, 
I have seen that your people love you very much. They do not worship you, but their hearts are overflowing with love for the Khalifa. And in the same way, it seems that you sincerely, you Huzu, sincerely love each and every Ahmadi. And you, you have a personal relationship with them. Now let's look at the response of our beloved Huzu. And that tells you that indeed, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a representative of the true Islam that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions uh, had. Now Huzu said, this is a sign of the truth of Ahmadiyyat, whereby there is an a, a lasting, everlasting spiritual bond of love between the Khalifa and the Ahmadis. This connection and attachment is natural and has been implanted in the hearts of the Ahmadi Muslims by Allah the Almighty. It is a continuation of the two-way love that existed between the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of Islam and his companions. In Abid Khan's diary, London, uh, London diary 2019 as well, Abid Khan sub right. I took the opportunity to share a comment from an Ahmadi lady from Pakistan who had expressed her love for Khalifa in a very moving terms. She wrote that her dream and lifelong desire was to meet Huzu just once in her lifetime. And the Ahmadi lady had concluded by writing, I'm a very humble, an ordinary person, and so I cannot ask for a waste. I cannot ask. I cannot ask you to waste Huzu's precious time by giving my salam to that person, who is more dearer to me than anyone else. Instead, Abid Sab, I seek your prayers that I am able to meet Huzu once in my life, even if it is just for a few seconds. Now Abid can continue to write. As I read this words, Huzu looked up. From his work, and it was apparent that he had been well, touched by the sincerity of the Ahmadi lady with great love and affection, affecting Huzu's voice. Huzu said, Even if she did not send her salam for fear of wasting my time, you should say my salam, you should say wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh from me to her, and may she ever increase in her sincerity and faith. We also have another um, uh, episode or another story from monthly Khalid Sayyidina Tahir, November 20, 2004, uh, page 299, where Atawa Mujib Rashid, Imam Atawa Mujib Rashid Sahib, writes that an Ahmadi from Canada brought a non Ahmadi professor, Dr. Gota, to meet Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi Rabi Rahmahullah in London. Imam Atab Mejib Rashid realized that it was his first time of meeting Huzu, so he thought it appropriate to tell him a little about who he was about to have an audience with. So Atab Mejib writes that when an Ahmadi speaks about the Khalifa of the time, the love he has for the Khalifa in his heart naturally manifests itself. And as it did when he began to speak about the Khalifa to Messiah himself. Dr. Gota then went and had the honor of an audience with Huzu. When he came out of Huzu's office, he shared his observation with his Ahmadi host, the one who brought him along for the, for the mulakat, saying, when I met with Imam Rashid Sahib, I perceived that Ahmadis have great love in their hearts for their spiritual leader. But after meeting with a spiritual leader myself, the Khalifa, I have come to the conclusion that the Khalifa loves Ahmadis much more than they love him. Now, this is an observer of a non-Muslim, a non-Ahmadi, who had come to, uh, to meet the Khalifa to Messi. In Abid Khan's diary, Jasa Salana, UK 2018, he also writes about uh, a story of uh, one Hanif Ahmed Mahmoud, a missionary from Rabwa who had previously served in Sierra Leone for a number of years before returning to Pakistan some years ago. Abid comes up right. I met him shortly after his mulakat with Huzu. He said he felt incredibly fortunate to meet Huzu and to be attending the Jalsa. He also told Abid Khan about his experiences in Sierra Leone. He said, 
There's one incident that I will never forget from soon, from soon after I arrived in Sierra Leone. I was taking a shade under a tree when suddenly, suddenly, I heard someone announce something in a very loud voice, obviously in the local Sierra Leonean language. So he never understood what he meant. Then he went on to say, suddenly, many young African, African children came running towards me. I was confused and asked my interpreter to tell me what was happening. And if so, continued to say, it turned out that the elder of the village had instructed all the children to come and meet me by saying, he is the representative of the Khalifa to Messi, and so go to him and reap the blessings of the Khalifa. It showed me right from the start that the African people had a profound bond and deep attachment with Khalifa. And this was something that I continued to see throughout my stay in Sierra Leone. And this is quite interesting because this is the same. I mean, I, I even think of uh, Amir Sab Ghana. And I remember, I recall when I was a little boy, I would normally go to his house and uh, cause a lot of trouble in his household. But when he sees that I've returned from the United Kingdom for, for duties, for MTA, and he knows that I've come under the instruction of the Khalifa to Messi, the Amir Sab, whether in Ghana or Nigeria, treat me like a king. And I know it's not because of me, but because of the fact that they know is the Khalifa to Messi who had sent me to go and do some duties. And that is the love that the Umrah, the Amirs, also have for the Khalifa to Messi. That some, I mean, people humble and uh, uh, people like us are even acknowledged with that kind of respect and dignity only for the fact that they know it was the job of the Khalifa to Messi that we've gone toward to undertake. Now I'll go on to also narrate some of the incidents in some of the mulakats, which I believe this one was the Kudam mulakat with Huzul, perhaps the Australia one. Now what we heard was one of the uh, Kudam asked Huzul, how can we strengthen our relationship with Khalifa to Messi? Now remember, our main focus here today is the love. How can we actually develop a special love, the true love that we need to have for the Khalifa to Messi? Now, when this question was put to Huzu, how can we strengthen our relationship with the Khalifa? Huzu, in a very beautiful way, said, you know the people who live in Africa, they have never seen me. There are many who have not personally even met me yet. They simply listen to my sermons. There are some who don't fully even understand my sermons as translations into their languages are not readily available. Yet despite this, when our Jamia students go there, when the engineers and architects go there from Humanity First and IEEE to install taps, pumps, TVs, and solar energy, they said that even if you go into the villages, the proper villages, you will find that the people there are so attached to the Khalifa and that they always ask that the Khalifa, they, they always ask about what the Khalifa and the advice he gives, and so on and so forth. And this brings happiness to them when they get the responses from these people who have visited Africa. When people go to Huzu goes on to say, when people go to Russia, I send pens with people whom I know. I send pens to people with whom I know in Russia, and they express their love in return. Huzu goes on to say, so this is something that relates to the hearts of everyone. I cannot make you strengthen your relationship with the Khilafat. You should ask your heart as to what you should do to strengthen this relationship. And again, what Huzu is trying to tell us that this love is actually instilled by Allah himself. And that is the true representation of what we saw within the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his what in his uh, uh, Sahaba. And that is what we see again now among what the Khilafat al and then what the, the, the followers of the Jamaat, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community members. And I know a lot of people in Africa, when you go there, they always tell you, oh, I wish I would go and see Huzu. Yes, it is true when you see Huzu, but we can see from this statement of the Khalifa to Messi that there are people who are somewhere far, far away and their love for the Khalifa to Messi is far more than even those of us who are near him because they have developed some special obedience 
to the world, to the Khalifa to Messi. A lot of times we hear this statement as well, the writing letters to Zu, and I personally have got this uh, statement so many times, or oh, the Khalifa to Messi. When somebody have an issue and it comes to you, you know, the first advice you normally tell the person is, please write to Huzu for special prayers. And they will tell you, oh, I just wrote last week. Why should I write again? You know, the Huzu is too busy and why should we go and disturb him and all those bits? Now we see this actually beautifully explained by Huzu himself in one of the mulakats with the Jamia students in Canada. When one Canada student asked Huzu that some people think that they are wasting your time by writing letters regularly or weekly as Huzu is very busy throughout the day and don't want to waste the precious time of Huzu. Now let's listen to the response of our beloved Huzu. Huzu then replied, first, it may be an excuse because at times people just want to find a way of trying to excuse themselves and as such would give that as a flimsy way of trying to get away with it. But Huzu goes on to say, but in reality, if that is actually the case, at least they should be praying for me to Nawafo. They, so if you are saying for whatever reason, everyone who can hear me, including myself, if we say we cannot write to Huzu repeatedly and establish that connection with the Khalifa to Messi, the Khalifa to Messi is saying, at least we can establish that connection with him by doing two nawafal daily for him. Now the question there is, do you and I do it? Are we actually fulfilling our part of this covenant with the Khalifa to Messi? And Huzu goes on to say, if no nawafal and no letter, then how come there's any connection even between me and them? Huzu went on to also say that, I mean, they shouldn't write long letters and they should stick to the point so that, I mean, he can get what the main point and pray for them. Now, talking about the uh, writing letters to uh, the Khalifa to Messi, the Promazar alayhi salam beautifully because also Promazar made it quite clear that we should be writing at that time, the companions should be writing to him so that they establish that bond with him because that is his responsibility also to hear from them and have their pain and pray for them. Now the promise I said in Malfuzad volume 8, page 84 and 85, he said, whenever I receive so many letters requesting me to pray for worldly objects, I feel so sorry. Very few people write to pray for attaining nearness to Allah and no more. There are others who write in a cheating way. Now look at how Huzu put it. The promise I say, some of us write letters to him in a cheating way. First, they would request to pray for their being absorbed in Allah's work and mention many spiritual objects. And then they would bring in their worldly desires and request for their, what, their fulfillment. The promise I goes on to say, I at once realized their objective. And he says, don't they know that Allah is omniscient and is aware of the real intention of every man? To adopt the attitude, to adopt that attitude is to deceive Allah. It must, it must be gotten rid of. It behoves you that you devote yourself wholly to Allah. And if you give preference to Allah's will, and then know for certain that your worldly lives would also become honorable. Allah has a jealousy for his servants. He personally looks after them and then saves them from all kinds of evil. So this is where our beloved Salam, telling us, and it, it this happen, would be the same for our beloved Huzu, that what he wants from us is that we write letters to him sincerely, seeking nearness of the Almighty Allah, and we shouldn't what, attach ourselves so much to the world. Now, going to the, the last bit of my presentation, because I believe my time is almost up there, where we want to understand how we can truly develop the special love for the world, the, the Huzur, and what the love for the Khalifa to Messi would mean to us, and how the Huzur actually want us to what? To love him. And this can be seen from how the promised Messiah salam, want us to also what? To love him. The Promise in Malfuzat, volume 2, page 359, said, The covenant of Bayat, and re remember one thing, that whatever the Promise desires is what the Khalifa to Messi also desires, because it is his re what, representative. The covenant of Bayat, which a person enters, enters into at my hands. So now I want everyone to perceive that 
We are doing bayat at the International Jasa, for instance, and our bayat at, at the hands of the Khalifa Tul Masih. So the promise I hear will be represented by what the Khalifa Tul Masih, the Huzu. The covenant of bayat which a person enters into at my hands is mainly for giving preference to religion over worldly what affairs and to make me make me who has been commissioned by Allah the, and who is the very what the vice of the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and who has been called the hakam and the adil also that he will take my decision as final and do not and do so with an open mind so the promise I want us to take his decision the khalifa to mercy want us to take his decision as final and we need to do so with what sincerity and open heart we hear time and time again people will say no 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 the khalifa to mercy cannot in, in religion uh, we have our freedom he cannot tell us to do everything that is that complete unconditional love is not acceptable that is not right if you have become an Ahmadi and you've done a bayat at the hands of the Prophet and the hands of the Khalifa to Messi, now let's continue to listen to what the, the Prophet says. He says, but if somebody, after having entered into this covenant, does not accept my decision with pleasure, and rather he finds a sort of reluctance in doing so, then it can be said that with it can be said with certainty that he has not he has not cut himself off from this world. The chains of fashions and worldly ambitions are still keeping him tied down, and he has not come out of covering which a man has to tear up to attain to the stage of perfect devotion. He goes on to say, unless he is cut off from the tree of this world and is grafted to the divine tree, he cannot be flesh and have growth. Behold, when a branch is cut off from a tree, it cannot bear fruits anymore nor can it produce any flowers, even though it is kept immense in water and all sorts of means are used to keep it alive as was the case before it was cut off. It will never bear fruit. Likewise, unless a man is grafted to a truthful person, he cannot, <clears throat> grafted to a truthful person, he cannot have the power to attract spiritual bliss just as a branch is cut off from the tree, cut off from the tree cannot be green by watering it. I'll finish it off with what a statement of the Khalifa to Messiah himself and how he expects us to actually develop our special love for him. And that true love is what is called what? Obedience to the Khalifa to Messiah. And this is taken from the legendary UK refresher course 2016, when Huzu speaking at the Legna UK refresher course said, the Legna members, and remember, when Huzu always says this, he says, whenever I address any organization, nobody should think that it's peculiar to them only. It's referring to all of us. So whether it's Legna, Kudam, Ansar, the youth, the old, the young, whatever, male, female, this applies to all of us. He said, the Legna members, would only follow and listen to the executives when they observe, observe that they, the AMLA, the executive members, are entirely obedient to the Nizami Jamaat and they prove to be shining examples of loyalty and obedience to the institution, institution of Khilafati Ahmadiyya. Thus, you should reflect upon your own standards by obedience. Reflect upon your own standards of obedience and truthfulness and truthfully, and truthfully evaluate if you have personally made every effort to act upon the words and instruction of Khalifa Tul Messi. Now, this is what the Khalifa Tul Messi is saying to us, that if we actually sincerely be very reflect upon whether we are truly obedient to the Khalifa Tul Messi, that is when we can then think of actually guiding other people. How can you expect Latina members to follow you and implement all your suggestions and programs if you yourself is failing to follow what your Khalifa have told you and failing to act upon his vision. Zu goes on to say, therefore it is imperative that you listen to my Friday sermons. Now this is one way, as I said earlier on, that to be able to dis establish a bond, to keep that company of the Khalifa to Messi, one best way of doing it is what? Is attaching ourselves to MTA. 
Now, Huzu addressed this in a very beautiful way. He says, this is imperative that you listen to my Friday sermons, my addresses each week, because my sermons are a means of learning what the Khalifa to Messi desires and what his vision for the Jamaat is. If you do not sit down with your own family to listen to the sermons of the Khalifa to Messi, then how can you direct others to do so? In each week, there are 168 hours. In seven days, there are 168 hours. And if you are unable to sit even set, set aside even just one hour to listen to the words of the Khalifa to Messi, then it is a cause for extreme concern. The sermon of the Huzur is a means through which the tarbiyat of the Jamaat and the office bearers are done. It is a means to bring in peace to the homes of the Ahmadis. It is for these reasons that each year Jamaat spends millions of pounds to fund MTA. Bearing all this in mind, if our office bearers, even if our office bearers do not take advantage of these great blessings of Allah, it can only be deemed as shameful and cause of deepest regret. I have mentioned this because it has come to my attention that there are some office bearers who only read the online summary of my sermons. <clears throat> As there are others who listen only on occasions. In other countries, Wuzu goes on to say, in other countries where there are time difference of even 10 and 11 hours, plus there are many sincere Ahmedis who listen to my Friday sermons without fail and share whatever I have said with others. Yet, yet here in the United Kingdom, there are office bearers who do not listen to them when, when there is no, who do not listen to them when there is no time difference. Thus, I say again, Huzu says that I say again, thus I say it again, that you should listen to my sermons and take notes from them and assess whether you are fulfilling the instructions and guidance of Khalifa to Messi or not. And see if you are failing and see. Sorry, and see if you are falling a prey to those weaknesses and sins that the Khalifa to Mercy wants against and strive to improve and free yourselves from those shortcomings. Similarly, reflect upon, similarly reflect upon the good qualities, but rather than becoming proud or satisfied, seek to build on them with humility. Seek to follow whatever the guidance that the Khalifa to Mercy gives you and start by ensuring your own homes are a reflection of the true teachings of Islam. If your home's lives, if your home's life is virtuous and your family is acting upon the true teachings of Islam, then naturally you and your family will have a positive influence on others. So in brief, what we can see here is that the true way of showing our love for the Khalifa to Messi is only by true sincere obedience and attaching ourselves to him through MTA listening to all the guidance that he give us and try to act upon it. May Allah, out of his grace and mercy, enable us to do so. Amen. Well, I mean, Zakul Ahmad Sahib, um, as expected, we've had more comments than questions, um, highlighting, mashallah, some very faith-inspiring anecdotes and reminders about the huge blessing that Khalafat is, mashallah. Um, there is a question from uh, Fateha Nadim. Uh, who is asking if you are able to please share any of your own personal experiences with Khalafat or being close to Hafsaz al Khalifa al Masih? My own personal experience with the Khalifa al Masih. <laughs> that, is, that is an interesting one. Um, uh, I guess I would, uh, one of them actually has already come to public light, so maybe I would uh, share that with you. And that is uh, during. I think 2016 or 2017 Shura uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, when there was supposed to be the election of the uh, this Amla of United Kingdom. And uh, uh, very uh, strangely or very uh, emotionally, I would say all I had uh, from Huzu was sitting at the stage and all I had was Oususa. Uh, I had it, uh, but then it was faint, I couldn't. And then my, my eye was actually bowing down, bowing down. So I wasn't actually paying attention. 
And then I heard Ousu Sap, I was calling you. Then Ousu actually sitting on the stage, just calls me. I actually went to stay with Ousu on the stage and we were there for, I guess, more than an hour. And uh, for that, for me, that is something because obviously we had the Amir Sab, we had all the, uh, the Tafsir, the dignitaries and uh, whatever. And again, that even take away that myth that we have within some of the Nana Ahmedi, Nana Ahmedis who say that uh, the Ahmadiyya is the Ahmadiyya Jamaat is a bit racist. This is where in the Shura of the land of the Khalifa Tul Messi, he calls a humble uh, man from Ghana, I mean, to bring him all the way to what? To the, to the state to be with him and to stay with him for a quite a good number of hours. I believe this has come already come to the public life. So I felt I should share with this you. But there's some more, and I believe we can take that later on, inshallah. Uh, Jacques, I'm feel free to share any further experiences. I'm sure that's what most of the audience will be interested in. We have another five minutes. Another five minutes uh, of uh, sharing. Uh, I guess uh, was in my last year, another one maybe probably has also come to <laughs> the public light. And uh, I believe uh, Abit uh, can also uh, capture it in his diary as well. And that was uh, my last year in the Kudam uh, days. And uh, that was my, our last Ishtama uh, of Kudam al Ahmadiyya United Kingdom. And as the I've been heading the Kudam and the Atfal in Scotland for about eight years, and that was my last year. Uh, I was actually uh, very emotional that year, and I actually wanted to have a chance to shake the hands of the Khalifa to Messi. Actually, that was my last year. So obviously, that kind of feeling is, is going to be spectacular, trying to have a handshake from the Khalifa to Messi. So throughout the whole Tahajjud prayers, that was my only prayers and my only desire that Allah, this is my last year. If I've done any, anything little, which was even pleasing to you, please let me shake the hands of the Khalifa to Messi in this uh, 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 Jalsa. At least let Scotland win something so that I'll go to the stage. I'm already on the stage, but behind the Khalifa to Messi, so that I can just go and pick it and shake the hands of the Khalifa to Messi in my last, uh, my last uh, year in Kudamul Ahmadiyya. Uh, last estimate, but uh, strangely, uh, Scotland didn't win any uh, 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 prize or award that particular year. So oh. I sat there very sad and uh, literally very sorrowful because, uh, as Allah, have you not listened? Have you have you not heard my prayer? This is my last year. I just wanted to shake the hands. So everything was over. I believe I was the most sad, the sad person on the on, uh, during the the ishtima, when the ishtima came to an end. I saw the Khalifa from the sea just walk in front of me, and then he went away. So as we came from Scotland, we normally go in a very big coach, a very big bus. So uh, it was time for us to go, and I was just trying to get our kudam and not fall into our bus to hit the road. Uh, we have another mm -hmm. ten hours journey to come back to Scotland. But just as I was going to join the bus, I said, no, let me just uh, use the loo before I jump onto the bus. So eventually I was going to the loo and those of you who know Islamabad of those days, I don't mean Islamabad of today because that is completely transformed. Um, <clears throat> as I was going to the loo, one of the um, uh, national AMLA members met me and he goes like, listen, uh, Ms. Awakas Ahmed, our Sadr Majid Ahmadiyya have instructed that all the national AMLA members should follow Khalifa Tumasi because Khalifa Tumasi is touring the land of Islamabad. And as at the time, he had gone into the uh, where the horses were, if those of you who know Islamabad of those times. And uh, I was trying to get access, and even I was, the Kudam there who didn't know me would not even give me access. The Amumi guys would not even allow me to go. Another a national AMLA member came to say, oh, please. Let him go, he's, he's one of the national members. So I was permitted to go in. Uh, as I went in, I was already sorrowful, very sad because of the whole episode of my last Eshtima. I've not had a chance to shake the Khalifa to Messi and I was feeling so down. So I was just literally further away from the Khalifa to Messi, not getting anywhere closer to him. But as we, uh, he was uh, where the horses, horses were, I think he, he caught me by a glimpse of something and he, he shouted for me. I didn't actually hear. So those who were closer to him said, hey, 
I'm at Saf, uh, Huzu is calling you. So I just started running uh, to Huzu. And uh, the moment I got there, I mean, Huzu just raised up the hand to shake me. And that moment was something which was very strange because everything that I have been praying for in the Tahajud throughout the whole Jasa period was manifested in that particular period. And some of you probably might have seen that photo. Somebody managed to capture a few glimpses of it from his own phone or so, and then later on I managed to get that, that, that uh, photo because it wasn't planned for. Uzu shook my hands, he took, he actually took hold of my hands, got hold of me and he started walking with me. And then started questioning me, Ahmed sir, is, is this your last year? You know, just imagine this is my last year and this is what I'm praying for. And Khalifa told Messi, being the representative of Allah now start talking to me about the same thing that is this your last year uh, in Kudam Lahodia? And I said, gee, was you? And then, and then he looked at everyone, he goes like, those of you who don't know Ghanaians, and Huzu has stayed in Ghana for about eight years, so he knows Ghanaians and Ghanaians culture very well. And he says, when they get to the uh, Ansarola, when they, they are moving from Kudam to Ansarola, that transition zone, they stay there. They don't want to go to Ansarola. They will stay there for probably another three or four years before finally, because the AIM system was not in place. Now that the AIM system is in place, you can't dodge it. But before then, this is normally the routine in Ghana. So who should then make a joke that, listen guys, this is what we normally see among the Ghanaians that uh, whenever it gets to the time for them to move to Ansarola, you will never go. Ahmed Saab, are you also going to do the same? And this brought a lot of laughter among everyone. Everyone was literally just laughing. He kept on holding mm -hmm. my hands. And I said, Jehuzu, me, I'm going. I've even told uh, Wakar Saab, can confirm to the fact that yes, he, he knows that this is my last year. And he held my hand all the way to the time we got to the end of the uh, the, the the places the horses were. And that also, uh, for me, was something which was quite inspirational because uh, something that I was actually praying about, something that was a secret to me that no one knew, the Khalifa al started talking to me about and then actually fulfilled my desire of the handshake. I just needed one handshake, but actually held my hand for about two, three minutes whilst he was walking with me. And you can, you can see, you know, who's holding your hands and you, you wish your hands is pulled away and you still want to leave it there. And he kept gripping hold to it for that. And that is actually a fulfillment of a prayer. And also for me, it shows that the Khalifa to Masih indeed is a man of Allah because there are certain secrets that Allah actually reveals to him that others will never ever know. I believe uh, with this, uh, we can we can say, uh, I've tried to share two of them and I cannot carry on any longer, isn't it? Unfortunately, Amitabh, as much as we would love to hear you for hours and hours, uh, there's a lovely couple of anecdotes that you have kindly shared with us and enough to, I think, further inspire and strengthen our own faith and love for Allah, which is obviously the very topic of tonight's lecture. Um, so Jazakallah for your time and effort in putting together uh, a magnificent and very inspiring uh, talk tonight. So Allah bless you. Um, and as ever, my thanks also to our viewers. I'm sorry we couldn't fit in everyone's questions tonight. Um, our lectures return next Monday, the 17th of August, uh, when we'll be honoured with a lecture by additional Wakil Tabshir Abdul Majid Tahir Sahib, who will be speaking on the topic of the love relationship and complete obedience to falafat that lecture will be in urdu and then a week today on tuesday we will have an english lecture by murabi al silsila ataul fatir tahir sahib on the topic origins of atheism in europe and the light from the east so please make sure that you join us for both of those lectures at the same time of 7 30 pm i will now hand over to our respected national secretary Baleen. Nadima Rahman Sahib to close with any final remarks. I would just like to say again, once again, Jazakallah to our dear viewers who keep on coming back, listening to our lectures. Allah bless you all. And especially to Ahmed uh, Awusu Sahib uh, for sharing with us education and some lovely stories. If I could end by humbly requesting Ahmed Sahib, if you could lead us in silent prayer so we can conclude the session, please. Do I please?
Amin. Amin. Amin.